Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Today we're going to go for a walk up into the hills behind Mitri Lake, which is near Yuma, Arizona. This isn't the lake, this is a canal, which I'll tell you about when we get up to the top of the hill and get a better look at it. Lakes out that direction. The canal was built by the Bureau of Reclamation around 1906. I'm stepping up on the rock above a tunnel. This canal, which is part of 53 miles of deep water canals like this in the Yuma area, and there are 213 miles of canals that serve a lot of farms and a lot of people. It's all distributing the water of the Colorado River. This isn't Mitri Lake. Mitri Lake is off to the right. This is a parking lot up on the hill from the lake. That's my green RV. Thank you. 
So, people are building hoodoos up here at the ridge. And there are several of them up here. It's Hoodoo City. Well, from up here, you can see the slightest little sliver of the lake. And as I was walking down there, it occurred to me to think about this. It's not a matter of having both arms to, or both hands to catch yourself, uh, which you can't do if the camera is holding one of them. Um, it's a matter, as a bipedal human being, that you have both arms. See my arm swinging in the shadow? You have both arms to swing, which is what balances you. Think about that the next time you're walking on a trail like this. Your arms swing all around and about, and what it's doing is it's balancing you. It's keeping you upright. It could be a bipedal instead of three points. The third point being your face. See that arm swing? Now, the other arm, the elbow there, I'm holding the camera. See camera? But if I had two arms to swing, I'd be more steady. That's your walking lesson for today. I know most of you think you know how to walk. Think about it. Well, hey, that was quite a hike for me. Actually, I ran into that guy up there at the top of the hill. And I said, whoa, that's quite a hike. And I probably have hiked three miles mile and a half at that time and then back and uh, he then pointed out from the top of the hill where all he'd been around down through the washes and the valleys and up and over the mountain and he probably hiked 10 miles <laughs> so anyway it was quite a hike for me so I'm gonna sit here in the shade have one of my
non-alcoholic beers. Bush N.A. I've said before that I don't drink. And I don't drink. I don't drink since I'm 26 years old because I get the high before I get... I mean, I get the hangover before I get the high. And that's no fun. So I quit drinking when I was 26. Uh, and since then, I've surely convinced myself that alcohol makes me ill and gives me a headache. So I don't drink. I had a video the other day, and I showed a picture of Lynn coloring, and there was a bottle of Kahlua and a bottle of vodka sitting back there, which she makes uh, uh, white, Russian, white Russians with. And... Um, uh, she's my designated drinker. <laughs> she does have a drink now and then. But I don't drink. So, non-alcoholic beer. Excuse me while I wet my whistle. I'm just glad to be able to hike. Three years ago in Zion National Park, if you watched that video from Arches and... No, no, it wasn't Zion. It was Canyonlands. Canyonlands National Park and uh, Arches. Uh, I was walking with a cane because I had a problem with my knee. And that went on for nearly a year. And I had gotten a cortisone shot. and uh, Frankly, it didn't seem to help much. And months and months later, when I finally got tired of it, I just said, well, to heck with this. I'm going to start walking. And uh, actually, there's a video where I talked about it hurting down there when I was walking by Lake Chapala in Mexico. And I'm kind of hesitate to say what I'm going to say because you either think I'm crazy or you don't believe me or you think I'm lying. My friends and my relatives don't believe me, but what I'm going to say makes it important that I believe me, and I do. I believe that the human body can heal itself. After months and months and months of my knee hurting, I finally decided I'm just going to walk. And I say to my subconscious, you're going to fix this. You're either going to make it stop hurting or you're going to disguise the pain for me. I don't really care, but fix it. And about a week later, it stopped hurting and I can walk. And then a year and a half ago, I started having a very significant pain in the front of my upper right leg. And I went to the doctor, and he said, you have a bone spur at L3, and he wanted to give me a cortisone shot, which I agreed to, and I had it. But he got in there, and it, you know they keep you awake while they're doing that. You have to have an MRI first, and then they hook you up to a, a video camera when they're actually putting in the shot in your spine. And he says, as my leg starts tingling, and I'm complaining... I'm sorry, I can't go past the bone spur. I have to go up to L4, and I'll put it in there, and hopefully it'll dissipate. Well, I don't know if it didn't dissipate or that wasn't the problem or what, but it didn't fix it. So after living with that for several more months, I finally decided I'd fix it. So again, I told my subconscious, I don't care how you fix it, dissolve the bone spur, grow the nerve around it, or do whatever you got to do. And three days later, it stopped hurting, and it hasn't hurt since. That's been over a year ago. It was a year last October. And, uh, well, you saw me hiking today. I'm pain-free. Like I said, you think I'm crazy, lying, or... Uh, something else, but that's my experience. Thanks for hiking with me today. Now we're going to film hummingbird wars. There's about ten of them around here. There's one right over there in the tree. Hang on a second. See if I can get him. He's just sitting there.
Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.